experience because he's playing Deafening Clarion in his main. That's right. That is a, a three mana sweeper. Now, to get in the mana together for it can be tricky, <laughs> but if he does, it can really get out to a start. Now, this is actually a very clunky draw here from Ken. He's used to having a bunch of one and two mana spells. Instead, it's three, 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 and then a six, but you don't ever actually pay six for it. Yeah, and I think part of the main reason why Ken chose to keep this is he does have that combo, right? He's got Red, Rotting Registrar and Embercleave, and really, this this. Golos ramp deck doesn't have a whole lot of ways to kind of fight that one-two punch. Interesting opener here from Kenji. You see the Clarion plus the Gruul Guildgate and the Once Upon a Time, and you think we're good to go, but boy, the rest of the cards in that hand were slow. A pair of four drops and a pair of column four to four to nine drops or whatever. Right. It's going to be really tough. So he's going to go ahead and send it back. It looks like. Yeah, the the most important cards in the early game is making sure you can find either that Growth Spiral or that Arboreal Grazer to make sure you have a way to kind of ramp into your 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 circuitous roots and your Goloses. Another card to mention here, uh, Paul, you mentioned Deafening Clarion, but there's also Oko Thief of Crowns in this deck for Kenji instead of Teferi, and he may be able to use that to recoup some early damage in case he does find a sweeper. Might even have to use it to turn that Rotting Registrar into a 3-3 to yeah. make that Ember Cleave a little more manageable. No, you're right. And let's not forget the Acclaim Contender. Not very good on its own. <laughs> this does not look like much of a Knight's deck based on this keep. All right, there's an Inspiring Veteran one turn late. So we're just going to see Rotting Registrar, the 7-6 hit the battlefield here. Kenji's going to respond with the Growth Spiral, putting a Boros Guildgate into play. And it's Oko yeah, time. Yeah, it's just Oko time, right? Rotting Registor. You're cool, but you'd be a lot cooler if you were an elk and a little <laughs> smaller, says Kenji. Yeah, the thing is, you could hear us plenty of cards to discard here. He doesn't really care that much about the knights in his hand. He really just wants to kind of end the game with the Rotting Registors. And Kenji, his game plan is just simply surviving and getting to that late game, getting those Field of the Deads in play to put a steady stream of chump blockers. And as you can see there, Oko turning that Rotting Registor into a mere trained Armadon or trained Corsair, three mana, three, three. And Ken now probably just going to be following that up with another, another, another Rotting Registor. But if he does, Kenji can still tick up that Oko and turn that one into a three, three yeah, as well. he can. And also, of course, the decision is always, do I have to actually attack Oko, or can I just constrain your life total? Now, I can tell you that, generally speaking, Ken can afford to, to uh, ignore Oko, which is insane, right. but not in this position. His hand was very slow, but that's okay. You know, generally speaking, the play pattern for Ken's deck is that he plays a few cheap creatures to get in damage while Kenji will be setting up his mana, and then he uses Rotting Registor plus Ember Cleave to finish the game. He just didn't have that early part, but that means he has more of the late. Yeah, and this is, this is big because now Kenji's going to have... Ken Kenji has that 3-5 against the two 3-3s three on the battlefield, but this again, this Ember Cleave is really difficult to play around. Yes. Ken can just attack with both of the Rotting Registors and have that, uh, that Ember Cleave to attack through that Golos. Yeah, he also happened to draw Rimrock Knight, which has Boulder Rush, which he can actually afford here? So no, he not quite. He has the two natural red sources, but he can't use Tournament Grounds to cast Boulder Rush, right? Right, but the Ember, the Tournament Grounds, I believe, can be used to cast oh, the yeah. Ember Cleave. Yeah, so, they can. No, so, you're right. right. They can yeah. cast equipment. So interesting. And Kenji, it, it, what, what are you supposed to do lethal, here, right? right? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What are you supposed to do here? He's just like, well, I guess if you have Ember Cleave, I mean, you can't really play around it. This deck just doesn't play inter instant speed interaction. So Kenji probably just in one of those situations where I'm going to block, cross my fingers, and just hope you don't have it. Yeah, and that is really what Ken is trying to prey on here. He yeah. brought this deck to the table. This is not the same as the other Knights decks that we've seen. This is very much all in on Ember Cleave. It also plays Steel Claw Lance times four. By the way, both of these equipments times four looking to try to get in that big hit. So Kenji just says, well, I'm going to bite the bullet here and block the Golos. He knows what's coming. Yeah. This is what the deck was built around, getting these creatures into play, putting pressure, and slamming that Ember Cleave onto one of them. Yeah, and I'm assuming he's going to go for Boulder Rush here too, just for the extra damage, because Oko's dying anyway. Oh, no, he didn't. He's going to save it for a more opportune time. Kenji falls down to 15, and the turn gets passed. Yeah, it looks like he's waiting for 
a following turn where he can actually attack with the Rotting Registrar for a potential lethal attack. And by giving it plus two, plus zero, I mean, that's effectively one mana deal four extra points of damage. So now what's Kenji going to do? He could potentially play Oko and now turn that Ember Cleave into a 3-3. But he still has to deal with an army of 3-3s. But you know what? That might be his only option here because he really simply just does not have a good answer to Ember Cleave. So what he could do here is run out Oko, turn Ember Cleave into a 3-3 creature, and then play a Fabled Passage to allow him to put two zombies onto the battlefield. So now we're going to end up with a whole bunch of 3-3s three against a whole bunch of 2-2s, two which normally you'd think is good. It's just the supply of 2-2s two is kind of never-ending. Right. And the supply of 3-3s, three less so. Chad is right now trying to decode what it actually means after the Ember Cleave becomes an Elk is like, is, does the other thing pick up an elk? Is, is it an elk that's also a weapon? <laughs> I believe the Embercleaf falls off and will turn into a 3-3. Yeah, I didn't mean rules. I meant oh. flavor. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Look, we're, we're in round seven here. I'm, I'm trying to focus on uh, <laughs> what, you know, what's going to happen, who's going to win. Well, you know what chat's focusing oh, on. Oh, yeah, The nonsense. Yeah. Of Come course. on. <laughs> All right, a Sacred Foundry off the top of the library here for Yukihiro. Can wing through all of the options. Probably just going to start with an attack here because none of the other creatures really do anything. And uh, choosing only to attack with the Ember Cleaved Rotting Regisaur here. And uh, this Rimrock Knight is going to do some serious damage here. We're looking at, and look at this, heads up, right? Mm -hmm. Ken actually choosing not to run that Rimrock, right? Rimrock Knight out the previous turn is paying dividends here. Now we have a 6-4 double strike trampler. We're gonna be able to kill all of the creatures and deal additional trample damage. That's right, so Boulder Rush getting the job done. And now he actually gets a pretty nice follow up here as well, building out a solid board. Ken, of course, is gonna be thinking though, about cards like Deafening Clarion, which he hasn't actually seen yet. So he's going to say, all right, I'll kind of go in the middle, right? I'll play the Rimrock Knight out. I'll equip up the Ember Cleave. And then I'm going to pass a turn back with a Claim Contender and Inspiring Veteran, which if you go Veteran into Contender is a nice follow-up play in case he gets uh, some type of sweeper or something all bad right. happens. Kenji might be, might be doing a good job of coming back here. That Krasis found him another Golos. He now has two Field of the Deads in play. He's going to play a Gruel Guildgate, so now he's got a lot of creatures in play. Wow, he could even Growth Spiral into another land, potentially. Ooh. I mean, Ken's deck was designed to try to run over a whole bunch of zombies, but there is a limit to what it can do. Right. And the reason why Kenji cast that Growth Spiral first instead of running out that land was just in case he found another Field of the Dead. If he casts Growth Spiral, finds Field of the Dead, then plays a land after, that's more zombies. All right, well, he did find a land. It wasn't a Field of the Dead, but that means that he has six zombies now. A Knight of the Ebon Legion off the top of the library, not a big help here for Ken. Yeah, we're probably going to see an Acclaim Contender here to see what Ken Yukuhiro can find. He can find something like maybe a Steel Call Lance. Black Lance Paragon interacts very well with Ember Cleave. With Ember Cleave. In However, fact, it's devastating. But only if it's on a knight. That's correct. So it will not work with the Rotting Regisaur. Or the Elk. <laughs> Which right. is the, the rotting. <laughs> the elking, rot, rotting elk register. You, you know, the, 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 yeah. the thing that's attacking. It's petrified. And look at this. Kenji is not messing around. <laughs> He's throwing every single zombie yeah. in front. And uh, so. This Rotting Registor slash Elk will take down four of the zombies, but Ken will lose it in the process. But I mean, Kenji's Ken just trying to untap with that Golos, right? Absolutely. He's got the mana. He's got the mana to activate Golos. And uh, and if he can get Oko going to gain him life every turn, Kenji could actually pull this thing out. You know, it was a slow opener for Ken, and you don't want to give Kenji that much time, and he did. Yeah, that Oko. Huge, huge in this matchup, shrinking down those Regisaurs because typically, you know, most of the most Golos decks traditionally run Teferi instead of that Oko, and that Oko just doing so much to slow down Ken Yukihiro. 
So Kenji actually has mana to cast Oko and activate Golos. By the way, chat wants to know what does uh, Golos' activated ability do? You and get you to can exile see it here. By yeah, the way, <laughs> it is it is it is very sweet, as we will say. You get to you get to flip over the top three cards of your library, and you can cast them all for free. You can also play a land if you hit hit it off of that as well. So, and don't forget, you know, this is a deck that has a lot of very high end cards in it as well. So it is really powerful to just get to sit there and do that. Oh, and look at that Kenrith as well in Kenji's hand. He's probably going to be playing that out next turn. And uh, Kenrith with all the Field of the Deads and the ability to give all your creatures haste and trample can just basically provide a lethal attack out of nowhere. I think if I'm on Kenji's side, I'm thinking, okay, I am on the verge of coming back, turning the corner here. What is the way that I can lose? It probably involves that Ember Cleave that's on the battlefield. So it might be in his best interest to to try to... Just, just Oko it? Right, just Oko the Ember Cleave. Yeah. I mean, he's not losing to a 3-3, three, three, right? right? Exactly. Like, look at the board he's developed. And that's exactly what Kenji does. He takes the scariest possible card. And look at this. Ken Yukihiro says, well, that will do it. Embercleave was the only way I could get through. A little smile from Kenji. He picks up game number one. Now, this is really important match for both of these players because they're both sitting at four and two. If you win, you've reached the requisite five wins and you advance to day two regardless. If you lose... You still can advance, but you are at the mercy of tiebreakers. And that is not a fun place to be because there's going to be multiple people that you're going to be fighting with. Definitely. Now, Ken Yuko Hero did have a relatively strong start to the day, meaning that his tiebreaks are probably pretty good. But of course, you always want that feeling of knowing that you're locked in. Dang right you do. One card that I really want to highlight that Ken Yuko Hero cyborged in, Chance for Glory. Oh, yeah. That is a nice one. Yeah, you know, there's nothing quite like a card that says you, <laughs> you lose, lose the, the game. game. Yeah, that's just the, <laughs> you know you're playing for real. That is the definition of high risk, high reward. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, Chance for Glory gives all your creatures indestructible until end of turn, and then you get another turn. But if you don't win by the end of that turn, you that's lose it. the game. That's it. Sweet one. Now, if you notice, after Cyborg, Kenji does have a lot of interactive spells, a lot of removal, but still, they're all at sorcery speed. You see that Devout Decree, you see the Prison Realm, but none of those are going to be able to still deal with an instant speed Ember Cleave. Now, if Ken Yukihiro has a bit of a faster start and then can put that additional pressure with the Ember Cleave, I mean, you know, Ken built his deck to beat the Skolos deck. But as we mentioned, uh, Paul, you know, Kenji... He hedged, right? He said, you know what? I'm not going to play Teferi. I'm going to play Oko. I'm going to play Deafening Clarion here. He did not want to lose games to decks like this. And he needed those Okos. I mean, he did. Like, if those were Teferis, this would not have played out the same way. All right. Now we get to see a real curve here from, uh, from Ken Yukihiro. He's got Fervent Champion into Rimrock Knight if he wants it. And then if he draws a land, he can play a Claim Contender or Registrar on three. Yep. Uh, Kenji's hand is also fantastic. Drawing one of the few untapped sources of green mana to go Arboreal Grazer into tap land. And now if he just finds land number four, he can run out Circuitous Root. And, uh, you know, and he has a Field of the Dead in hand, so he can just start pumping out zombies. Wow, he's also got two copies of Deafening Clarion to help clean up the mess. Here he's going to snap off a block. And we're going to see Remrock Knight, I should say Boulder Rush, get used to good effect here, clearing away a potential blocker. Kenji just says, land, go. There's an Ember Cleave off the top of the library. Both draws turning out good. We get to see kind of what happens when both players play their best stuff. Ooh, Here's Rotting Regisaur. Rotting Regisaur. He's one land away from getting oh, that Ember Cleave on the battlefield. The top. Wow, Prison, Prison Realm. Realm. Beautiful top deck there from Kenji. Look at that little smirk from him. He's like, <laughs> had it. That's exactly what he needed because he drew the red source for the Clarion. So he was set up. But Ken Yuko, you were top deck, the perfect card in the Rotting Regisaur. But then, of course, one good top deck deserves another that is how that works with that prison realm so now we're just going to see fervent champion chip in for one and then an acclaimed contender hit the battlefield now since there's another knight he'll get to look at the top five and he can search for an equipment or a knight or an aura or a legendary artifact and he just decides to go with another knight with the rimrock knight rather than the steel claw lance yeah. passes the turn back but we're just going to see Clarion here, right? For yeah, Kenji. for sure. Because because if Ken Yukihira has Embercleave, you can put that on the contender, and all of a sudden it's out of Clarion range. Uh, of course. 
So Kenji moving one step closer to a day two here at Mythic Championship 5. He is up a game. Ken Yukihiro fighting for the match. He's trying to force a game three, and he's had a very nice draw to do so, though this is never really where you want to be. Yeah, and things are looking excellent here for Kenji. He stabilized. He's still at 18 life, so he can even potentially survive an Ember Cleave attack here. And now with the circuitous route, he's got five lands in play. If he fetches out two lands, they enter the battlefield at the exact same time, triggering the Field of the Dead. So he will have two zombies in play, along with that Temple of Mystery that he's going to play for turn. Wow, so this is working out very well for Kenji. He'll have three zombies before he passes the turn back. And of course, playing the Temple of Mystery after the Circuitous Route. That way he can actually figure out what he's going to draw for the next turn. And Ken, well, he's got a handful of action. He's going to chain a Claim Contender into Contender. The second one will trigger. And he sees Steel Claw Lance and another copy of the champion. He decides just to go for the Lance, though his lack of mana here means that he's just been able to play one thing per turn, which, yeah, it's not really in the game plan here for Yukihiro. Kenji does need to find. I want to say like an action spell here. Mm -hmm. I think he's likely, he's still going to be afraid of that Ember Cleave and he knows about the Steel Call Lance. So he's going to round with Deathling Clarion here, then follow that up with a land. Now, but you know, he's kind of out of gas, right? He's got the Gross Power, he's got the Force, he only has the one Field of the Dead. And of course, Ember Cleave can just pile on damage very, very quickly. So Kenji, you know, he has a ton of great draws. Ooh, ooh, how about a Field of the Dead off the top with the Gross like Power? Like that one, like that one. <laughs> Kenji, at least let me finish making my point. Right, you, like, you like come on, Kenji, card. don't interrupt. Yeah, <laughs> so he ends up the, the, passing the turn with four zombies. But as you mentioned, no cards in hand now for Igashira. So let's see if he can find some action. Devout to Crete, not what he wants to, I mean, it's fine, but it's not going to do anything right now. And Kenji's looking at the board like, well, how much, what am I attacking with? Like, what is going on here? Yeah, so there are a couple of cards that he needs to be mindful of. Maybe cards like Fervent Champion cards with haste, along with, of course, a flashing Black Lance Paragon at end of turn. Mm -hmm. But again, he's looking at his life total, right? And he's like, well, I'm at 18. Like, what are you going to do? Sure. You have yeah, a Black this, Lance This Paragon. is not close enough. I think Ken is just dead. He's, he's very close to dead, at least, because Ken, uh, Kenji yeah. has that Devout Decree for one of the blockers, and Ken can only play one creature this turn, right? No. So, so I think, yeah, I think he's actually just dead because he doesn't have a lethal attack. He can actually gain life, though, with the Black Lance yeah. Paragon, what, so what that's he, what he can do. What he could do is attack with it and then play Boulder Rush on it and then Black Lance Paragon, and then he would end up gaining five life. Right, right. But come on, is this... Is this the way that this deck is going to win? It doesn't seem like it, it. it. It's his best shot right now. He's going to be able to gain five here, go to 11, and Kenji's going to be able to get in for eight. Golos wow. Tireless Pilgrim. That is exactly the type of card he wants to see off the top of the library at this point. This allows him to just jam with the team. He could Devout Decree one of the creatures. I suppose you just do so. Oh, now, yeah, now especially with that block. He's going to yep. just remove that Black Lance Paragon, Golos, and, and yeah, there, there's at this point, nothing Ken can draw. Wow. At, the, at this point, Kenji can just go ahead and fetch that Field of the Dead, get the third zombie in play, and have basically a clear board here for Ken Yukihiro. Yeah, really sweet stuff here. Kenji Egashira on the verge of a day two here at Mythic Championship 5. But for you Ken Yukihiro fans out there, this does not equal elimination, but the win does go to Kenji. He punches the camera and says, got him. And he's through to day number two with this sweet four-color Golos brew. Yeah, we saw the Deafening Clarion really pay off and him not, not getting greedy with it, right? Not waiting for Ken Yukihiro to play three or four creatures because at any given point, Steel Claw Lance or Ember Cleave would put those creatures out of reach. So that really you know, paid off dividends here to this matchup. That's right. You could see that on Kenji's face, right? It is the scariest deck to play against oh, yeah. in the format. Let's